Hi, I'm Carl Mosley, the Vice President of Camerata Musica in Salem, Oregon. Today's program is a great way to end our 2020-21 musical season of presenting chamber music. This concert was the brainchild of our newest board member, Hector Aguero, who's an associate music professor at Willamette University and a very accomplished conductor. Hector reached out to Neil Dupont, who has spent more than 40 years as the principal percussionist at the Oregon Symphony. Neil and two of his fellow percussionists, Chris White and Paul Owen, have prepared a dazzling display of digital dexterity, which is almost as hard to say as the title of the program, which is Neil Dupont and the Prestidigitators of Percussion. This program was filmed in Portland and remastered by the talented Steve Reed of Cinemaction Films. It has opened my eyes to the possibilities and the beauty of percussion instruments. A real experience for me and I hope for you as well. You can watch all of our video recorded programs over and over on Comcast channel 22 and 322 and on the YouTube link found on our website. Our website is www.cameratamusicasalem.org. It's been an interesting and a challenging year. I am so proud of George Struble and what he has been able to do to bring five virtual concerts this year where all live performances were not pos uh, possible. You have been able to hear top-notch performers from the safety of your home, and more importantly, Camerata Musica has been able to help financially support musicians during the worst of the pandemic. We need your contributions to make this happen. Please consider sending a check to our post office box 2782 in Salem, Oregon. We'll look forward to seeing you in September. And now, drum rolls, please. Good evening, and welcome to Neil DuPont and the Prestidigitators of Percussion. I have with me two incredible percussionists, one from the East Coast and one from the West. Joining me from Portland, Oregon is Dr. Chris White. Welcome, Chris. Hey, Neil. And joining me from Baltimore, Maryland is Paul Owen. Welcome, Paul. Hi, Neil. We are your Prestidigitators of Percussion for the evening. You might be wondering why I named this program the Prestidigitators of Percussion. It's certainly not because the word Prestidigitator is easy to pronounce. This is probably the fourth take I've done of this particular section of our performance. However, I wanted to talk about the, the magic of percussion. All the pieces you are going to hear this evening are performed on percussion instruments, some of which carry beautiful melodies, others of which create fascinating sounds. And our composers use the vast array of percussion instruments from pitched percussion to what we call idiomatic percussion or percussion instruments like cymbals and triangles that make the idiomatic sound of the material of which they are made. This, as well as drums, it makes up our percussion section in an orchestra. Percussion repertory has been expanding since the 1930s with the famous Verez ionization percussion ensemble and the golden age of percussion has been essentially the last 50 years. I've been fortunate uh, to live amongst uh, all of these great composers. Some are personal friends, and I know their music very, very well. So I've picked pieces where the prestidigitators uh, can perform for you their percussion magic by handling these instruments in ways that are almost sleight of hand, if you will. Our first piece gets us back to our roots. It gets us back to the military use of percussion in uh, armies and for marching purposes. Uh, the piece is called Trio in a Rudimental Style, uh, but it is hardly a rudimental snare drum piece. It is performed on three sets of drums. Each percussionist 
has one snare drum and one tuned bass drum, all of which were provided to us, by the way, by the Yamaha Drum Corporation. And we're very grateful uh, for their assistance in making this video. Each player has a solo that they will play against a groove-based ostinato beneath them. And then the entire group rocks out uh, to uh, a, a great uh, and fascinating and vibrant percussive ending uh, after about uh, four minutes of incredible drumming. So I hope you enjoy our first piece this evening, the trio in a rudimental style. The next piece on our program was written by one of my dearest friends in the world of percussion, the marimba virtuoso and composer Gordon Stout. The name of the work is Skylark Are in Circles and is dedicated to the marimba virtuoso Momoko Kamiya. Gordon has written some program notes and let me read them to you. The music is very dance-like in quality, going over and over through mostly the same sequence of harmonies while melodic variations are developed. 
The melodic ideas become more and more like a bird or flute singing as the work progresses. A skylark is a bird, sometimes known just as a lark, that sings as it rises skyward. Gordon says he sometimes sees colors for certain pieces of music, and this music always struck him as having the color orange associated with it. Therefore, as the music continually dances in a circular and joyful fashion, the skylark sings in the orange sky. This is Skylark, Orange Circles by Gordon Stout.
next piece has a very simple name for being a very complex piece of percussion music. The piece is entitled As One, and it is by the American composer Gene Kuczynski. Kuczynski teaches at the University of Delaware, and he and his uh, teaching colleague, a fellow by the name of Tim Brocious, have an ensemble known as the Quay Percussion Duo. This piece was written for this duo in 2007 and involves one marimba, two percussionists playing on one marimba, and a number of identical small percussion instruments that each percussionist plays, attempting to play as one for the entire piece. We hope you enjoy the Kozinski piece as one.
Our next work is entitled The Song of Alma. It is a three-movement work of which we are going to play only the first movement, which is entitled The Rose of Sharon. And the entire work was written in 2008 by the New York-based composer and percussionist Andrew Beale. The original version of this piece was for solo marimba and soprano and uses the text from the Old Testament book, The Song of Solomon. This was written in approximately 945 BC and King Solomon was known for having written over 3,000 proverbs and 1,000 poems which were turned into songs. From the Song of Solomon, we learn that Alma grew up with harsh brothers who forced her to labor in the family's vineyards. She viewed herself as a common girl, like the common meadow flowers, a rose of Sharon and a lily of the valley. Yet Alma's life changed forever when the most powerful ruler known to man fell deeply in love with her. And it is these sentiments of love and passion that are expressed in the version for three percussionists of the first movement of the Song of Alma, known as the Rose of Sharon, which we will perform for you now.
Neil DuPont was born in 1953 in Brooklyn, New York. Oh, I'm sorry, that's me. Uh, the reason I'm uh, reading that is because I composed the next piece, which is called the Percussion Audition. Uh, we use the term composed uh, very loosely here uh, because I actually wrote none of the music that you will hear. This is a theater piece, more or less. And if you ever wonder what goes on in the mind of a musician who takes a professional orchestra audition, this piece is supposed to give you a little bit of insight into what happens behind those closed doors in a concert hall on a day when the orchestra is not performing, when approximately nine musicians, the music director, and the 100 contestants for an opening in an orchestra get together and audition for a new percussionist. This is the percussion audition into the mind of Neil DuPont. These symbols are really heavy. Why do we have to bring so much equipment to these auditions? Unbelievable. 
Well, I guess it's good they didn't ask me to bring a xylophone. This must be the place. Candidate 352 is on stage. I'm finally out here. I thought I was going to play yesterday afternoon. Then they got behind and moved me to last night. Then 15 minutes before I was to go out there, they switched me to this morning. They still have the screen up, even for this round. The proctor is watching, though, so I'd better smile a lot. Let's get set up. There, I'm ready. Remember the mantra. Focus with intensity. Relax with intensity. Proctor, is the candidate ready? Wow, the guy sounds like he has been here for days. Actually, I think this is day four for them. You know how committees are at this hour, especially percussion committees. You can only hear those Delaclue snare drum excerpts about 20 times before you start losing your mind. Those suckers just sound like popcorn popping anyway. And the committee probably had a gig last night, then went out and sang karaoke for about two hours after the show. Now they're trying to wake up by drinking gallons of coffee and eating stale donuts. That's just awesome. Plus I hear the music director is out there. Great, that's all I need. Okay, when you're comfortable, you may begin with xylophone. The first excerpt is Porgy and Bess. Crap! Why do they always do this? It's just a knockout piece anyway. More than one mistake and they ask you to play it again. Two mistakes and you're hanging by a thread. Three mistakes and you're toast. Easy, not too much warming up. The committee will start rolling their eyes at each other and the union rep will give them a dirty look if he isn't reading his newspaper. Okay, chill. Remember the mantra, focus with intensity, relax with intensity. All right, remember the accents? Watch out for the A, F sharp, E sticking sequence. Keep a steady pulse. Okay, I play it at about 120. Let's see, how fast is 120? Yeah, that's it, got it. Okay, here we go. One, two, ready, go! Nailed that sucker. Thank you. Would you move on to tambourine and play Carnival Overture from letter T to the end? Great. I love to play this excerpt. I wonder what my tambourine sounds like in here. Okay, okay, chill. Remember the mantra. Focus with intensity. Relax with intensity. All right, lots of energy, perfect rhythm. Let's get into it. Thank you. Um, would you play it again, please, and play it a little bit faster? And make a little more out of the ending if you can. Just play the last section. And would you use our tambourine, please? Shit. They don't like my sound. That's a demerit. Damn, let's check out their instrument. Oh, great. The head feels like they soaked it in water before they brought it inside. Probably left it in the car overnight. I heard it rains a lot around here. Whatever. Let's just power through this one. Here we go.
Thank you. You're so welcome. Our music director has just arrived. He would like to take you through the snare drum excerpt. Hello. I am Maestro Ludwig Gruber. I'd like you to play Bolero. Don't I recognize that voice? Probably played for him at some festival. Was it Chicago? No matter. Bolero, not as hard as people think. It's all about being steady and consistent and really soft. But remember Bolero rule number one, never play Bolero as softly as you can the first time in an audition. They will likely ask for it softer the second time. Okay, here we go. Just play it until they ask you to stop. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Huh? Oh, I guess they want me to stop. Very nice. I wonder if you could play it somewhat slower. I try to do bolero as uh, if it's more of a funeral procession than a dance. It seems very dark to me. And I'd like you to play it with more, uh, how to put it, uh, uh, irony. I want to feel the ironic bitterness between your part and the solo parts. Then uh, would you please have the phrasing rise and fall a bit, but not too much. Musical in the rhythms, but still precise and exact with each attack, but not so much that we miss the sadness of it all. What the hell does all that mean? All right, just do it differently, I guess. Slower, maybe more dynamics. I guess he'll tell me if I get it right. Time to go into the bolero zone. That mental state that blocks out all but the feeling in my hands and the orchestra. Because you know that no soloist in the orchestra ever plays this in rhythm. So there are always micro adjustments to make every second. Here we go. God, I am starting to get bored already. Okay, just keep playing. Wait, am I on the first measure of the pattern on the second now? Damn, stay focused. Isn't this the orchestra with that hot viola player I met once? What's her name? Jen something? We went out for drinks once. What a charmer. Smart, talented, beautiful. Wow. I wonder if she still works here. It would be fun to get to know her better. Wait, wait, what are you doing? Get back to the zone, get back to the bolero zone. Okay, I think we're okay, yeah. I can probably get a little louder now. Geez, when are they going to stop this? Thank you. Let's move on to the final excerpt. Please play Tchaikovsky's fourth symphony cymbal part, last movement. Okay, home stretch now. Just have to be sure that I don't catch any air in between the cymbals. Let's see what we have here. Some 20 inch Sabians. They look okay. Let's test them out a bit. Okay, it's a decent sound. And they meet pretty well in the attack. Let's get ready. You know, when you think about it, this is such a bizarre way to hire people for a job. No interviews, no talking. You don't know if you're hiring an idiot savant or a nice person. There must be some other way to do all this, but the orchestra business as a whole needs an overhaul. Orchestra auditions are beyond surrealistic. They're actually crazy making. And you know what? It makes me angry that we can't make serious changes in the orchestra world. All right then, I'm going to channel that anger into this excerpt. God damn it.
Thank you very much. Okay, I guess it's over. Try not to look winded. Well, I got through all the excerpts. I guess I'm still in the running. Smile at the proctor. They report you to the committee if you're a pain. Let's pack up all the crap and go home. I guess I played pretty well. Nick denoted too, but the time was good. Sounds were pretty good. Yeah, I think I nailed it. I'm definitely gonna move forward. I'm sure of it. This went great. So many things could have happened, but I got through it all. That mantra stuff really works. Focus with intensity. Relax with intensity. Got to remember that one for the next round. This gig is going to be mine. You've already heard my percussion colleagues, Chris and Paul, play a duo in the Koshinsky. They're going to play another duet for you now, entitled Nagoya Marimbas, by the minimalist composer Steve Reich of New York whose work has been critical to the world of percussion writing and to the world of music at large for over 40 years. Steve writes us some program notes for Nagoya Marimbas. Written in 1994, Nagoya Marimbas is somewhat similar to my pieces from the 1960s and 70s in that there are repeating patterns played on both marimbas. One or more beats out of phase, however, and what that means is one player will move their rhythmic pattern over in the music about one eighth note, creating new rhythmic combinations between the two marimbas. These patterns uh, change melodically, are developed and change frequently as each is repeated about three times, similar to his later works in the 1990s. The piece is also considerably more difficult to play than Steve's earlier works and requires two virtuoso players. And that's what we have here, of course, in Chris and Paul's rendition of Nagoya Marimbas by Steve Reich.
Have you ever wondered what a dead stroke is? Nothing mysterious about that. A dead stroke is a percussion technique where you take a mallet and instead of hitting a bar on a marimba or a vibraphone and lifting the mallet to let the bar vibrate, you hold the mallet down on the bar and it makes it for a very short sound. This and other extended techniques for percussion instruments are part of the fascinating sound palette that American composer Chris Dean uses in his work, Topography of Dreaming. This work is one of his latest pieces. He has been writing percussion music, some of which is standard repertory for the instrument for many, many years, and has been on the North Texas faculty since the 1980s. But uh, it's rarely performed because it is an unpublished work, so we're happy to present it to you here. Some of the extended techniques that Chris likes to use include bowing the marimba and the vibraphone, the dead strokes to which I referred, and uh, fascinating harmonic juxtapositions that leave you wondering, is there a key center? And on occasion there is, but like in most dreams, it's really difficult to find where the center of the piece is. I hope you enjoy the topography of dreaming.
Well, that's our performance for this evening. I hope you enjoyed our prestidigitations on percussion instruments. We hope it was magical for you. And I'd like to thank Camerata Musica of Salem for inviting us to make this video for you. Next year, we hope to return and see you in person in Salem or in some other location where we can make great music for you through Camerata Musica of Salem. On behalf of my colleagues, Chris and Paul, and with our thanks to all who helped us out in making this video, I wish you nothing but the best magic to happen to you when you become prestidigitators yourself. <laughs>